Well, good morning. It's Saturday morning. It's kind of cold out there, so wear a coat. We're going to read from Matthew 26, 47 through 50, just three verses today. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priest and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. So Judas betrays Jesus. Uh, one thing that we want necessarily realize, but in those days, not everybody knew what people looked like. I mean, if I say names to you, you probably know who uh, Sidney Poitier is, or Harry Reid, or um, Phil Donahue. You know, you, you, these people's pictures come to mind. You know what they look like. Um, if um, if you're in the ancient world and you say Jesus of Nazareth, some people who have seen him are going to say, yeah, 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 that guy. A lot of people have heard of him but haven't seen him. And so they wouldn't know in a crowd, well, which one is Jesus? You know, which, which one is the guy? We, we don't know. So Judas says, I'll go up and embrace him and kiss him. And that's how you'll know which one. And so he does. Um, and so he betrays Jesus with a kiss. Um, which has become actually a famous sort of uh, um, literary uh, phrase, but um, we'll leave that aside. So Judas betrays Jesus, uh, comes up to him, embraces him, kisses him, and he's got all these people with him, and they grab Jesus. Um, let's think a minute about betrayal and what motivated G Judas to do this. Um, we said a few days ago that you know, how the History Channel likes to play this at Easter time. But there is that Gospel of Judas, which purports to say, well, Jesus was in on it, and they were doing this to, to bring things to a conflict, which is pretty much nonsense, but that's what some people want to believe. Um, or maybe Judas was... Um, acting on his own, but again, trying to bring this... Um, trying to force Jesus' hand and, and say, Jesus, you know, if you if you don't believe in Jesus, well, watch this. He's going to do some things, and I'll make him do some things. Um, maybe Jesus, uh, Judas thought that he would be um, forcing Jesus' hand, and he would finally lead the revolution against the Romans, and so it was all going to be a good thing, and Judas was going to end up a hero. Um, we don't know what Judas' motivation was. No one knows. Uh, <coughs> but we know that, that Judas did this thinking that he was helping. Of course, he wasn't helping. That's the same way it is for most of us most of the time. We do these things thinking we're going to help somebody, and it turns out not to be so good. Um, if you've ever been in that situation, you know uh, what I mean. If you, if you try to help somebody get something done and it all sort of backfires, it explodes, and you've got to clean up that mess, and that's even worse than, than what it was to begin with. So there's that. Um, sometimes we betray our own desires or our own, um, our own wishes in, in trying to make something happen, and it doesn't happen. Um, we've got to be willing to let things happen. We've also got to be willing to let things die sometimes, you know. Um, the first uh, day I was at work when I got my first real job after seminary and I went to lunch with the pastor and he said, youth group's going pretty well right now, but uh, kids will graduate and it'll go down and it'll come back up. These things are cyclical. I understand that, so don't beat yourself over the head. And that was very helpful advice because they are cyclical and you can have a great youth group and then three years later, you got three kids and then, then it grows up again. So 
and it just comes in cycles. The life of the church is like that. You can have a really great program and then it fades away and dies. Um, and I've been a part of letting some programs die, much to the consternation of people who really wanted to keep them going. But I can't, you had to say, well, wait a minute, why? So uh, we're pretty far away from Judas here, but you know, we get into this, um, we must preserve everything at all costs mentality because we are afraid that if we don't, things will change and that's a bad thing. I think change is just simply change. Things change. And you got to learn to adapt with the changes. And you might not like the changes, but you live with it and adapt with it. And you find out, hey, you know, this isn't so bad after all. Um, I think that's there's something to that that's important. So when we think about betrayal, when we think about faithfulness, let's keep it straight. You know, what are we faithful to? We want to be faithful to Jesus. The the cultural sort of trappings that we package that in could change in all kinds of ways, and it would be okay. We wouldn't die. So let's just um, take a deep breath and relax, especially as COVID ends, and we see what form the church is going to going to take, both locally and everywhere, as we see how the church is going to be changing. Um, let's not be scared of change and let's not react against change, but let's understand change is simply change. Things are different from the way they used to be, and that's okay. If we can get that into our heads, we will be better off, I promise. For today, don't betray Jesus. See you tomorrow. See you Monday here.